Shalom, Yashallah, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High, Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Yasharallah. Call Holoyim La, Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Haraka, Kodash, for blessing our elders with the spirit of truth so that we may know. Shout out to the Akim and the Akwath that's keeping the faith and the works. Y'all keep at it. This your brother Abiah coming at you with more precepts. It's the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of Yahweh is. What's the lock? Let me start at verse uh, 15. Ephesians 5 and 15. See then... That ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Right? Make sure that you walk circumspectly. Make sure you pay attention to your surroundings. Right? Whether near or far. Right? Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Right? Please understand the times that you're living in. Can't stretch that enough, man. We are in the end times and this devil is making major moves. Because he knows he has but a short time. Why? Because we're in the end times. Right? It says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of Yahweh is. And the will of Yahweh is to unleash this devil so that he can commit uh, um, the most wickedness that the earth has ever seen. So that the most high can gain fame again in this world. Right? By taking down this wickedness. Right? Uh, matter of fact, let me go to, let me go to Romans, Romans chapter nine and verse 17 says, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose, have I raised thee up that I might shew my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth and you read about the salvation that Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai is going to uh, show the world through his people and the awesomeness of the destruction of the daughter of Babylon and the awesomeness of the destruction of um, Jerusalem or Israel right the land of because that's our land, so it has to be cleansed. Jerusalem or Israel will be built back up, but the daughter of Babylon will become a desert, will become a monument, so that the world will know, don't you ever in your life fuck with the most highest people no more, ever again, and always honor Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, right? But meantime, between time, the devil is loose on this earth and the most high is building them up to unleash all the wickedness that's inside of them or let me not say unleash it to uh, um, what's the word I'm, I'm, I'm trying to use I guess to languish in it you know <clears throat> to really let it loose on this earth like it says in the book of Daniel chapter 12 in verse 1, it says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. So the world going to get extremely wicked because the Most High is going to allow it to so that their salvation can be awesome and amazing and the Most High's name can be known around the world with respect, right? So we must stay circumspect and not walk as fools but as wise, redeeming the time. I'm going to let this video play and I'll be back.
We turn now to the climate crisis and its impacts being felt across the United States from the Midwest to the East Coast as millions face record heat and horrible air quality from smoke unleashed by the Canadian wildfires, hundreds of them. About 20 states that are home to nearly a third of the American population are under air quality alerts, including Chicago. You kind of smell it now. Now you kind of smell it. So I keep a mask on at all times to protect our elders. And so, but now I think we need a mask on for this. Uh, if you didn't catch what she just said, she keep a mask on at all times because of that thing that shut down the earth for a couple of years. <laughs> so she still, she going to keep it on to the end. I feel like we should fix this if we can. It seems like we should be doing something about it. Meanwhile, in Canada, Toronto's air quality is among the worst in the world due to the wildfire smoke. This comes as more than 45 million Americans are living in places that were under heat alerts Wednesday. A heat dome is lingering over Texas, where temperatures have reached some of the hottest on Earth. California is expecting a heat wave this weekend. An increased use of solar power in Texas has reportedly helped to stop the state's energy grid from collapsing. Meanwhile, new report by the group Stand.Earth and the University of Waterloo shows pension funds with major fossil fuel stocks have been tanking compared to those divested in order to reduce their carbon footprint. For more, we're joined by longtime Canadian climate activist Sapura Berman, International Program Director at Stand.Earth and Chair of the Fossil Fuel Nonproliferation Treaty Initiative. Her most recent article for The Guardian titled Canada is on Fire and Big oil is the arsonist you know now i want to pause right there for a reason right the, the, this particular video um that democracy now which is a news um a news channel on, on the internet and i believe it's on, on on television too i'm not mistaken i believe it is though but um what they're trying to say is that big oil is to is is to blame for the different wildfires. Big oil is to blame for uh, um, the 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 heat waves that have been coming consistently throughout the years, especially in California. California been burning. I want to say for about five six years now. Every summer, cons consistent wildfires. And they're saying that natural, well, oil is the issue and the companies behind it. I want you to pay attention to this because basically what they're about to um, try to get across is a plan for a digital savior. Right. Move away from oil, move away from gas and, and natural resources and move to something more cleaner right the solution is clean energy right even though who's the who who said that the wildfires are started by big oil and it may be who knows but check the narrative and this ain't this ain't nothing new they've been speaking on this i can recall uh man what's the dude's name um Al Gore and his big campaign back in the day on on um, what it was the greenhouse effect and saying that they needed to do something about it then, but everybody kind of called called it myth. But now I'm seeing the reasoning for it is to get the people to say we 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 don't want that anymore. We want something more um more clean, All right? But anyway. Sapura, here in the United States, we are hearing about the terrible effects, and we experience them in New York, of the air apocalypse caused by the Canadian wildfires. But we don't hear about how Canadians are dealing with these 500 wildfires. Can you talk about what's happening there and then this larger connection to the climate catastrophe? Absolutely. Thanks, Amy. What's happening across the country is devastating. What we need to remember is that 
this is the beginning of wildfire season in Canada. So we have now, as you said, close to 500 fires burning across the country. Officials are saying at least 200 of them are out of control and could burn the entire summer. So there has been over 8 million hectares of, of forest destroyed already this fire season. That's about 20 million acres. 120,000 people have had to um, uh, be evacuated and, and leave their homes. And of course, the smoke is choking people in Toronto and Ottawa and Montreal and, 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 and now throughout the United States. Uh, Sephora, could you uh, elaborate? Let's go to the, the article that you wrote, Canada is on fire and big oil is the arsonist. Could you elaborate? What are the points that you make there? Well, just two weeks ago, new scientific research from the Climate Hub of the Union of Concerned Scientists made a direct and measurable link between the increase in wildfires, not only in Canada, but also in the United States, and, and, the, and the carbon emissions from major fossil fuel producers. In fact... All right. Carbon producers. If you have been paying attention to this type of news... They have been um, having um, repeating a phrase carbon footprint and how they want to reduce carbon footprint per every person really in the world. But more so uh, speaking towards the daughter of Babylon and the surrounding nations. All right. Basically, what it means is re reducing like oil, burning of oil, uh, natural gas and so forth and so on. Right. And relying more on power power equates electronics power equates um you know digital right they looked at the carbon majors study and they showed that there are 88 companies that are responsible for the emissions that are trapped in our atmosphere today and literally smothering the earth causing this dramatic increase in wildfires the heat domes that you talked about the floods extreme weather and so these 88 companies are directly responsible for what we are experiencing right now 13 of those companies are in are in canada we hear a lot about the smoke but people aren't really talking about the fact that 86 percent of the emissions trapped in our atmosphere today they come from three products oil gas and coal and the fossil fuel industry it has been shown in, in courts across the world and in the United States that these companies knew. They knew what their products were going to do decades ago. They denied it. They delayed it. They delayed progress of policy. They're spending a half a billion dollars a year, the fossil fuel industry, to lobby against and weaken climate policy. And, and, and now, and, and they've slowed down the transition to cleaner, safer electricity systems, to cleaner, safer uh, transit, ways to heat our homes without poisoning us. You know, in, in, in some ways, this is, this is like big tobacco when they knew uh, decades ago, except they're not just poisoning us, they're poisoning our whole families, and they're threatening the air we breathe and a stable climate. And Sapora, could you speak in this context about the Trans Mountain Pipeline uh, and the Trudeau administration's response to it? You know, in, in a lot of ways, if, if you know, we, we talk about the big areas of carbon that are under, still underneath the ground, the oil, the, the fracked gas, uh, the coal that is, that is still underneath the ground as, as, um, as carbon bombs. And, and the, the Trans Mountain is a, you know, the Trudeau lit a fuse to one of the largest carbon bombs on the planet. The, what's really uh, fascinating right now is that we're seeing investors pull away from major fossil fuel projects, not just in Canada, but around the world, because they know that renewables are cheaper and they can see that climate policy is going to have to constrain fossil fuel projects if we're gonna keep the world safe. And so investors pulled out of Trans Mountain and the government turned around and funded it with public dollars. Now close to over well over $20 billion of taxpayers' money has gone into this, this pipeline project that crosses 3,000 streams. That would be the, you know, if it goes forward and, it, and right now it's being built, it's going to facilitate the expansion. 
expansion of the oil sands, which is one of the dirtiest oils on earth. You know, at a time when we know demand for oil is, is peaking and going down because around the world we're moving to renewable energy and electric cars. But there was a time when we all thought with climate policy that if demand went down, then fossil fuels would just be constrained. But every government wants to be the last barrel sold. So they're keeping these projects alive, like Prime Minister Trudeau did, by subsidizing them or even outright buying them. Right. So you 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 hearing the message, right? Move away from um, gas, move away from oil, move away from coal, and let's deal with power. Let's deal with electricity. Let's deal with uh, electronic cars and so forth and so on. It's a narrative being produced and pushed into people's minds, right? And it's and, and it's being made so that now that you you feel it. So if you feel it, then you have no choice but to listen to it. When it when it's presented to you, but depending on your mind, right, shows how you take it, right. Be circumspect. That's speaking to the, that's speaking to the elect. That ain't talking to everybody. Everybody don't have the capability of uh, on, on being circumspect, being aware, right, or quote unquote being woke, right, like real woke, not this, not this daughter of Babylon uh, version of it. But real, you know how it started. But let me go to um, we go to the book of Sirach, which is Ecclesiasticus, um, chapter twelve and verse sixteen. It says, "An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but in his heart he imagineth how to throw thee into a pit." He will weep with his eyes, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. All right? That's how this devil operates. Yeah, they present it in a way to where, yeah, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to help you. All right? This is for your good. This is for the, the improvement of the world. This is for the, for the betterment of society. But at the end of the day, that, that's not so. They real deal plotting on how to throw you into a pit. Right. Verse 17, if adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. And though he pretend to help thee, yet shall he undermine thee. Right. Be circumspect of your enemy. Scripture tells you, matter of fact, Sirach chapter 12 and verse 10, never trust thine enemy for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Understand who your enemy is and understand this, this, this enemy of ours is wicked as hell and has uh, all the resources are, are on the planet <laughs> to maneuver however it is he sees fit, to deceive however elaborate he wants to, right? Let me go to, um, let me see, what I want to go to next? Mm. Let me go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 6. Because at the end of the day, we trying to show the most high love, right? Scripture says, I love those that love me and those that seek me early shall find me, right? So we're seeking the most high now and we're trying to show the most high that we love him so that we can receive that love back when time is needed, which is always really, but more so in a time of trouble, right? Such as Jacob's trouble, because that's what all of this is leading to. But Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16 says, These six things doth Yahweh hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. The enemy did all that, man, and continues to do so. Right? You think that you think this devil, if if he did what she said he did, you think he'd give a damn about lives being lost in those fires? Of course not. Right? Verse 18, it says, And heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and run into mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Right? And and, and that fits the devil to a T. Right? Uh, let me see. Let me go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 29. Right, Proverbs 29 and 16 
says when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. And that's what we're witnessing. We're witnessing the fall of the daughter of Babylon, man. But before this devil falls, before this devil is taken out the way, oh man, wickedness is about to get multiplied beyond belief. And transgression is going to go through the roof. A time such as never was since there was a nation, man. All of this is leading up to Revelation 13. Right? 2 Thessalonians 2. Digital currency. Right? In, in Inside of you. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. I'm not just talking about digital currency in itself. Once they say this thing got to go inside of you for whatever made up reason they present, that's your cue. Right? Now comes decision time. Are you going to take it or are you going to leave it? All right? Um, let me see. Let me go to the book of Psalms. Chapter 58. Actually, Psalms 37. And verse 12 says, The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. Right? Selfish planetary. Right? Verse 32. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. So stay circumspect. Be wise, not as fools. Redeeming the times because the days are evil. Know who you're dealing with because the devil about to set it off. He already has for real, for real. But it's about to be blatantly known real soon. Power outages when that thing go dark, like on a Friday, and they say it got to ride through the weekend and Monday it'll, it'll be back. All right. <laughs> yeah, it better have some kind of some kind of something going on with the Lord. You know, the something I'm talking about is something righteous. Like I said, or like scripture says, I love those that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. Right? Hide it in the secret place of Yahweh, which is the word. Right? Knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. Right? So, get your mind right and make sure you understand what time it is, and I'll leave it at that. Hey, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ratazah, these precepts in this video were edifying. Call Holoyim La, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Harakha, Kodash, Shalom, Yashallah.